Welcome to the Creators here at Sum City. Coming to you every Tuesday and Friday. Extended conversations that build community making for creators videos, by creators. Art, making what you make. Today on The Creators, Robin Comstock, Manager of Economic Development in the city of Summersworth, New Hampshire, and how the creative economy is part of a vital, vibrant, and valuable community. So subscribe to our channel, comment, and most importantly, watch Building With Us as we build community with you. All right, welcome to Some City. Being joined here today by... Robin Comstock, who is the Economic Development Manager here in the city of Summersworth, right? That's correct. Good job. <laughs> so maybe this is uh, just sausage making. Yeah. But I was interested in the fact that Summersworth called you the uh, a manager as opposed to oftentimes towns will have a director. A director, yeah. And is there anything significant in terms of what the role is or, or you know, does that mean anything? Yeah, yeah, actually that's a great question. I've noticed that nuance too. Um, I think most often if it's an economic development director, it's an entire, it's a large department dedicated to economic development and the economic development person has a staff. And in this instance, I don't have a staff, so I'm managing economic development. I have uh, a, ter a terrific director of the department, Shanna Saunders, who does a phenomenal job. But in, a, in this small city, while this department is being established and hopefully grows, there is no second-tier staff that I manage. I, I kind of think that might be it, mm -hmm. I'm sure. Um, another thing I was going to mention to you, if you see me... Uh staring at the the devices i'm oz behind the curtain but the yeah. curtains pulled back yeah um i'm still with you i'm still i know that i can tell no worries <laughs> what brings you here what brings me to summersworth yes oh, and and this summersworth and this position yeah well i've lived on the seacoast actually since 1977 i took a job uh, right after college that put me in boston and from the beginning, I'm from a beach community. I'm three generations native San Diegan. I grew up on an island off of San Diego. And I just cannot separate either my body or my soul from the ocean. So when we took this job in Boston, I, I really wanted to live right on the water. And we settled on the seacoast of New Hampshire. And my husband and I have been here ever since. So at this juncture, the second part of your question, what brings me to Summersworth or why the interest in Summersworth, as, um, as f history would have it, I guess, as you would say, I uh, managed three chambers of commerce in the state over the years, and I'm very interested in community and ec economic development. And each of the communities that I worked in, I embarked upon my tenure with them as that particular community was on the cusp of its next iteration. And I am at a place where I am very, I wanted a part-time job. I wanted to work in the seacoast. And, and as important, I really want to feel as though I'm contributing. And so when this position came up, it very much aligned with my belief that Summersworth is on the tipping point or on the cusp of its next iteration. And I thought, I hoped, that some of my experience um, in Chamber of Commerce specifically might be helpful to this community while it's evolving into its, its next vision, its, its next self. And I was very excited at the possibility of being a part of that process. So moving from uh, uh, running chambers of commerce in, yes. in large areas, in Manchester yes. and Portsmouth? Yes, I uh, ran the Dover Chamber of Commerce for a couple of years. I was in Portsmouth for 11 years, and I was in Manchester for 13 years. Manchester is a 1,000-member Chamber of Commerce. I took over that position uh, when Manchester was just coming out of what had been a, a fairly depressed period and when there was a lot of uh, talent and wisdom and as my dad would say work wealth and wisdom to contribute to the community's well-being and its future and we worked on that for several years and now obviously um, Manchester's self today is beautiful 
The truth is, Portsmouth is very much the same story. When I first started at the Portsmouth Chamber of Commerce, um, the shipyard was the largest employer. We had a Maritime Heritage Commission. We had uh, sailors helping us with downtown maintenance and in their whites sweeping for spring cleanup. And um, Portsmouth was still, truthfully, a depressed community. And we're coming out of a period of uh, soft depression, a collapse of previous industries, and a pause, and then a reinvention or a, on the eve of its new iteration of itself. Um, so I was very much a part of that as both the CEO of the organization and uh, the manager of the downtown committee, the uh, historic uh, foundation that we held, and much of the work that we did. So I hope some of that's applicable here mm -hmm. or useful to the community. Well, uh, yeah, the question that sort of comes up is, um, I think, thinking of um, what Portsmouth represents today to right. people. Right, um, That uh, very vibrant, lively community people can't yeah. imagine I know. the down days. If, yeah, it, and you know, I, I'm coming to realize now I've been slow at the, gathering this le lesson and then embracing it, but I really think communities are like human beings. They have a life and they have cycles, and they are reborn as the child of the previous generation, and on it goes for, obviously, in New England, northern New England, we know for hundreds and hundreds of years already. And I think communities are living, breathing organisms that are the reflection of us, in a way, a kind of child. Mm -hmm. And we create them for a period of time based on particular either social, cultural, or economic needs, the needs of our children, the needs of our parents, and we create community around that. And when that changes, community has to pause and reassess, evaluate what it is to become and what serves the future better than perhaps elements of it did in the past. So community in general never dies, it evolves. Mm -hmm. And that's healthy and positive and optimistic. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, Northern New England, the seacoast of New Hampshire specifically, is very much uh, the same as that. So as caretakers of community, I feel we have a social responsibility to apply our talent, our wisdom, and our experience from those that preceded us and those who we think may follow us to ensure that community is meeting our needs as residents of that community. Well, you mentioned that um, you know it's not that we can fully create community. Community is always evolving, whether right. that's towards what might people might people might call vibrant community right. or what might people call, what people might call a uh, more depressed community right. or a less vibrant community. Right. Um, but that idea of creating that climate that sets the stage for something right. to happen. And along those lines, this being the creators, yeah. and welcome to our show, The Creators. Thank you. I, I love what you're doing, and I'm so happy you're here in Summersworth. Well, thank you. Everywhere. I feel so embraced by this community. Do you? Teaching at the Career Tech Center, yeah. and there's, a, there's an energy here. I formerly taught in Portsmouth for quite a few years and had my yeah. office in Portsmouth for many years, 10 years, even more, maybe 12 years. And there is a... Um, there's a vibrancy here in Summersworth, which which is exciting. Certainly on uh, a lower trajectory right now, not a trajectory, but a, a lower economic position than than it, it looks like Portsmouth is as a, as an yeah, observer. Comparative. But there's something that feels you know plucky. People really wanting to make this place what they want to make it. And my question is, are you a creator? Am I a creator? Yes. You're on the creator show, so I'm assuming Boy, you're a creator. Well, but are you? That is a that's a great question. Um, it's an interesting question on a very personal level because I've always envisioned myself to be able to say with confidence yes to that question. I am a creator. I like creating. I like being around people creating. In terms of professionally speaking. I think that I can fairly answer that question with a yes. I have a long track record in both professional work and volunteer work in terms of pulling people together and combing through talents and perspectives and energies and being able to successfully capture that, to be able to create 
a programmatic response to either economic or social issues. And those are often two elements of living together that are, are indelibly intertwined. So I, I like to think of myself as a creator. I think others would be a better judge of that. Mm -hmm. But I would hope that they would say yes. And how does that work? How does that work play out for you in terms of what you do? Well, what gets me, you up in the morning? Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's, a, that's actually, Bill, a great question, too. I was, this is so corny. I'm embarrassed to even share it with you, but it's just the truth. I was raised by parents who instilled with me, into me and my brothers a very strong sense of community contribution. And since a little girl, I was involved in not-for-profit work at the age of 12. Mm. But as since a little girl, because of that, and I would say largely because of my parents, my grand, gr grandparents, and to be very frank, my mother had me when she was very young. So I actually had my great-grandparents, uh, my great-grandfather in my life until high school. So I had this circle of family that was highly committed. My mother used to say to me all the time that it is our responsibility as human beings uh, to leave um, the world a better place for having our fingertips upon it. And there are a million expressions of that, but that was the conversation in the morning and the night in our house. How are we contributing? What are we doing to have positive impact? We were raised to believe we were a part of a village, of a, a global, a, a community. And I, again, I grew up on an island, so a part of the island, a part of the county, a part of the state, a part of the nation, a part of the world. And I tried to instill that in my son. I would love to have him in this chair and um, have you ask him that question. When he was an infant, he would laugh if he knew I was telling you this. He, literally, newborn, I would hold him up in front of the mirror and I would recite his name, and I would give our street address, and then our town address, and then our county, and then our state, and then our country, and then our planet, and then our galaxy, because I so wanted him to have what my parents gave me, an awareness of being a, a very small part of something that is very, very large. Hmm. That's a long-winded answer, but it I is. think good... you ask me why I get up in the morning. I get up in the morning to contribute. Mm -hmm. I get up in the morning to have positive impact. Mm -hmm. And for me, on a personal level, that's with and through other people. So when I can work with teams of people, I um, feel the most productive. It's mm -hmm. the most exciting and the most fun for me, mm -hmm. and I enjoy it enormously. Well, I know I, I felt uh, very uh, supported by you, you've uh, and feel that you have you know brought this business, encouraged this business along. I'm Without so you know, I, I think uh, I think in a when you're in a city position, you, you know you have to be uh, equal yes. across you know. Yes. But but I, I think you you have felt like a cheerleader for oh, things going on in this community, and I think that's a, a real. A real value. Oh, I'm so glad. And one of the things, we have our new sign out there. We it's just moved in beautiful. here. It's beautiful. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. And, you know, some city is uh, really reflecting this community. Yes. And But one of the things that makes this possible, because when I, when I first met you as the economic development manager and uh, thinking and was looking for a space here, I had mentioned that, you know, I just want to get started with this thing, and we found yeah. a great space to come into. And um, I guess my, my question is uh, related to... What does it do to the community when somebody puts a sign up and, right. and has a business there? And we've talked about pop-ups and how important that is to community. So right. what, what do you see as needing to happen, and what's your goal of what might happen right. in this town? Well, sort of backing up to the larger picture, kind of be in the treetops for a second and then drill down to the weeds. Um, in the treetops, why I'm here, I think what I've been hired to do is to fill vacancies, vacant commercial space, with um, vital, exciting, vibrant businesses that create jobs, bring jobs, and contribute to the community as a whole. And on a, for, uh, to belabor that just for a second, there are two sides of that. When a business comes into a town, it's true they fill vacant space, 
which uh, is exciting in and of itself. But the underside of that that we often don't realize is that those employees create the market and the consumers for the very products and services that we want to enjoy to have around us in our community. Whether it's a doctor's office, an art gallery, a restaurant, a museum, or a tech firm, those employees create a market and a demand for the products and services that the larger community needs. So often in many communities, my position is all is often called community development manager or director because the economic development of a community is so indelibly intertwined with the social and cultural fabric of a community. So if you were to kind of be at the goal, kind of in the treetops for a second, how do you measure success? What is the actual job description? It would be supporting existing businesses helping them to grow and expand, to sustain themselves in vibrant ways, and to fill vacant space with new businesses as well. And then getting way down into the weeds, the first part of your question is how do you do that? Or I think everyone does it differently, and probably based on their personal and professional experience or their particular work style, I am very much a collaborator, and I am at my best and most successful when I am able to bring large numbers of people together to collaborate. And so how I will, you will see me doing that is bringing segments together and having conversations and expanding my soul capacity by adding more people to the ability to accomplish solutions and hold that thought goals. because I just you're um, now it's back huh lost your camera for a moment there is it um, sinking um, it, there is something that I've got to track down there's some some bug in the system mm -hmm. uh, so picking up on this so how do you do it Robin yeah. is kind of I think what you were saying Bill and yeah. like I say I think any economic development director you talk to probably has slightly different responsibilities charged with slightly different responsibilities and certainly fulfills those in very in a work style that's unique to themselves how I like doing it is bringing people together and expanding my capacity and having a hopefully higher more impact um, so for as long as I started in Chamber of Commerce in 1988, and as long as I've been with Chamber of Commerce, that actually has been my work style. And it was interesting, as early as 88, bringing the, um, the, well, the shipyard, for example, in Portsmouth to the table, bringing uh, the historic, the people who were committed to uh, historic preservation and culture to the table of the business community, was unheard of in 1988. I literally had wars with members of my board of directors standing up and pointing their fingers at me that tourism is an economic development. It doesn't have anything to do with jobs. We shouldn't be meeting with them. Mm -hmm. But as a resident of community, I felt that it's all of us together. And I feel that the successes I had in that community um, showed that bringing these obscure elements together again, to expand the capacity of lone individuals that cooperatively, first of all, we do better. In my head, we do better things together. We do the right thing together because we negotiate a variety of opinions versus just one idea and one opinion. I am always amazed if that if I bring people to the table, the ideas that are surface at that table that I hadn't thought of. So I think it it sets a platform, a jumping board, a diving board, however you think about it, to jump into that pool from a stronger foundation. And uh, so you'll see me bring people together. I've actually already formed a couple of those roundtables, which have been very promising and hopeful. Um, I created a roundtable for Mally Farm, and we're now meeting quarterly, and all of the tenants of Mally Farm are coming to the table and talking about uh, what's exciting for them, what's working for them, where they feel, feel challenges. At the last roundtable, they were able to talk to one another about employee shortages. One tenant at Mallee Farm um, has a transportation service from, I think it's Lawrence or Lowell, and other um, employers not knowing about that were able to partner with him and to 
expand their workforce for jobs that were very difficult to fill, but in a, and even more around utility usage, signage, roads, and more. So the Mally Farm t uh, Roundtable, I think, is important for Summer's Worth. How can we help one another grow those businesses, expand them? Can we be proactive to um, changing trends and information that affects the nature of them conducting business there? I uh, have created a roundtable for the downtown community. We've met twice, and we're already talking about uh, three tangible projects. We did a whiteboard exercise and kind of uh, did a kind of brain dump of what our priorities were for downtown or what did we think as a group of volunteers that we could really do. Three ideas came out of that. You're going to see us talking about a, a facade flower pot campaign, a social media campaign. The group is very interested in trying to put the nuts and bolt to, bolts together to have a late opening on Thursday night, um, at least the first Thursday of every month to celebrate a common opening in a late evening. We'll, we'll see. We're at our third meeting. We'll talk about volunteer roles for that. And probably to me the most exciting and so young and so early on, but I've created a round table of bankers, investors, brokers, and economic development experts. We're meeting quarterly and we're building a relationship and a rapport. I'm learning about investors who want to invest in Summer's Worth. I'm meeting business brokers who represent uh, business clients who are looking for relocations or expansion opportunities. We're working together on vacancies. Um, it's very exciting. That group, too, has met twice. I'm developing positive and productive relationships with the members of that group. And uh, those are the beginnings. And I'm quite excited already. Back, you didn't ask this question, Bill, but backtracking on a comment you made in terms of the energy of the people in Summersworth, I agree with you. The people in Summersworth are smart, they are creative, they are committed to their community, and they are ready, willing, and able to come together to work for the for the future for Summersworth. It, it is a, it isn't known as this yet. I hope I can change some of that. But it is a high energy community with a lot of very creative minds who are doing innovative work. So mm. we've got all the pieces here and we are moving forward. Innovative work uh, is a great, great way to pick up a, a, a theme I thought we could talk about, which is the creative economy. Yes. And, uh, you know, you talked about uh, it was very hard to get. Uh, business people in some of the other chambers you worked with to realize the importance of tourism, for example. Right. And similarly, arts and culture has often seen as a kind of luxury of a good place to live. And right. uh, I think many people are realizing it's not a luxury. I was just going to jump in and correct you, so please keep talking. Yeah. Sure. So the, um, how, without needing to convince people, but... Um, how does this uh, this notion of a creative economy, okay. how does that relate to what's happening in this particular place? Right. Well, I would say, first of all, well, first, there's a historic district commission here in Summersworth. Um, it's got a great group of people as commissioners. And that is a good indicator that there are people interested in history and historic preservation. And now it's in 2018 versus 1988, it's no secret that preserved history, stru structural history, uh, create a, a very unique environment that coupled with the cultural attributes of a community that are leveraged to be able to share the extraordinary uniqueness of that particular community is a huge advantage. Because of the people of a community, because of the economic history of a particular community, the culture of that community will be unique in and of itself, unique to itself. And that is around, obviously, the anthropology and the people. And sometimes that's realized in custom or culture, as we might refer to as anecdotally, but it's also visible in structure and art and how that collides with the creation of community 
and the sustainment of community. We are human beings. By nature, we create. And many of us are extraordinary in terms of their ability to demonstrate that vision of what is around them and what they're inspired by and what they're driven by and motivated by, whether it's through words, through song and music and poetry or discussion groups, or whether it's through a paintbrush or other um, means to create something that has been inspired by the very nature of community. There is a remarkable arts community and that arts community contributes to the culture of the community itself. And I hope that in my role that I will be able to pull back the sheets on the cultural aspects of Summersworth, the history of Summersworth, and the art of Summersworth. And I think, again, that often collides in visual demonstration. I see art throughout your office, and it's a great example of Human beings have a soul. I would venture to say a lot of animals probably do, but we are the one, one of the animals that, who, that can at least articulate it to one another and share it. And we teach it. We learn from the past, and we teach it. And we feel inspired. Our soul is wider and richer, and intellectually we are broader and have um, more capability through the participation and engagement of art as either a creator or as an observer. So I think that, and in my experience, I would tell you both in all of the communities I worked in, in Dover, Portsmouth, Manchester, and now Summersworth, to anchor economic vitality and community development in this whole idea of, cul idea of culture, however we define it, and thereby art, however we demonstrate it, creates a synergy that is very desirable because in a large part it creates something that is so unique to that particular geographic space. And uh, not to belabor the point, but it's inspired by the geographic space. Here in Summersworth, we see a lot of art around the river or around water. In the mountains, you see it around the mountains. In the fields, you see it around fields. Um, so it helps tell a story in ways that we can touch and feel um, that are one step more spiritually connected mm -hmm. than walking on it or riding a boat on it. And it's important. It cannot be overstated. It is just simply important. The, uh, another thing I was thinking about as you were speaking about the, 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 the natural attributes of, of this area, of any area, um, was I was also thinking about... Um, this is a mill town, right. and how the mills uh, really, you know, having one large company, the Great Falls Manufacturing Company, right. that profoundly influenced this place and right. the culture that developed. The, the very creation of the community, the physical structure of community was influenced by it. Yeah, and so something that, that I, I'd uh, been thinking of imaginatively how to develop that in, uh, in story form, in, in dramatic and documentary form, uh, how we can realize that legacy and what it's given to us in terms of stories. Right. Uh, the, the, the brothers who ran a, a chocolate shop who are all employed, a number of brothers all employed by one chocolate shop yeah. here in Summersworth. Yeah. Uh, amazing stories that are, that are here and that cultural legacy and, and some of it, you know, not so positive and uh we're you know, human we're flawed that's right right that's right and so anyway that that's uh it's an exciting thing it's an exciting thing to see this develop here yeah and i'm so i'm so glad to hear that you're capturing that uh, those stories is again being a uh, a great granddaughter and having my great grandfather so a part of my life and i know i'm preaching to the choir but those stories at some point are impossible to share so to cap, unless they're recorded or unless they're drawn or painted, but I, I don't think we can know who we are to become until we know where we come from. Mm -hmm. And um, my dad used to say to me all the time, open every door in life, just open every door and then stand in the middle. And no door mm -hmm. should ever be closed until you walk through it. Every door should always be open. So to have those people telling those stories and having them enter into you, enter into your identity of, 
who you are as a human being and and what the community in which you live and choose to experience your parents and raise your children is and is to become, how it evolves. To first understand from where you come, then you once you understand as much as you're capable of understanding and then to better understand, therefore, where you are to go. It just opens up more choices the better you understand the past and you experience mm. it and feel it. And I don't know, I think a lot of people will probably have a lot of words about it, but that energy from the past is, is with us. Mm -hmm. uh, if, should we choose to embrace it and learn from it and grow from it, it is with us. All the good and all the bad, too. You learn, I, I always feel like, I think you learn more from the bad and the negative. You learn what not to be, that's half the battle, right? Mm -hmm. Then you only have to identify what it is to be. So yeah. good and bad, it's just, it's just us. Yeah. But it's all in the context of where we live it. And my current profession of economic development, it's all in the context of the sense in northern New England of a village, if you will, of a main street community, of a unique sense of identity, a unique history. History. Yes, we all had mills all up along the rivers from Canada on down to the south, but each community along that former mill culture and mill society uh, created a unique project, had a unique experience with it, transferred it and transported it in ways unique to um, the transportation systems of that community. And there are slight nuances that make each one of them unique. Mm -hmm. uh, shared, of course, but yes, unique too. So, mm -hmm. Well, great. Well, I, I look forward to uh, picking up on this conversation a year down the line. Obviously, w you and I will have uh, conversations uh, more as as time goes on, but have this official conversation um, moving down the line and see what changes you know, have, have come to this, to this I'll, place. I'll look forward to that. I'm so happy to work with you as a part of the team in some city. It's just great. It's very exciting. Thank you, and thanks for coming in today. You bet. And uh, we will catch all of you next time on Some City and the Creators.